Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CCT Certified Zentangle Teacher. And I want to begin this video by apologizing about the last video that I did because I thought about putting some nice music in the background and it was playing very softly for, for me. Um, it was music from uh, Spotify, song list and then when I played the video back it was definitely too loud and it did not allow the closed captioning to work and uh, I still wanted to display the video because Zentangle uh, the method itself is in itself a universal language you don't need to know what that person is speaking to follow along. But um, again, I do apologize. And um, today, <laughs> I want to show you, uh, first of all, okay, so what I'm showing you here is a table that belonged to my grandparents. It's 48 inches wide. And today I had a glass top put on it. And before the top came, I put some of my favorite tiles and things that I've gotten from Zentangle on this table. And I really enjoyed going through everything that I had. Um, this is actually the tile that I did last week on my last video, and I added watercolor to it yesterday. So that was fun. This is an opus tile that I did. This is one of my first watercolors. Anyway, I just am excited that I finally got this tabletop. I wanted to share that with you. Okay, so now I'm back at my desk. When I was going through my albums to find things that I wanted to put on my tabletop, one of the tiles that I found was this one. And the two patterns here, this one is called Disco, D-I-S-C-O, and this one is called Cubel. And I did this tile in 2018, so I was still fairly new to Zentangle, but these were easy and fun patterns, and I really enjoyed working with them, and I want to show you more about these two patterns. And I'm going to use a piece of Fabriano Tiepolo paper that I colored with a watercolor wash in the background. And you could use any kind of tile that you want. And um, could be a Zendala, a three and a half inch white, any color. Okay. When I was going through my collection to find things that I wanted to put on my table under the glass. This is one of the tiles that I found. I did this in my first year of Learning Zentangle, and I really enjoyed both of these patterns. This one is called Disco, and this one is called Cubel, and they have a lot of possibilities. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is Disco, and the name Disco comes from the, the first elements of all Zentangle patterns are a dot, that's what the D is for, the line, which is the I, the S curve, a C, and an O. So those five elements make up this pattern. And it's also one that is a continuous line. And to do that, you start with your dot, put your line, 
this is the C, this is the S type curve, and then your O. And that's the very basic part of that pattern. You can, if you wanted to, um, I'm not gonna start with the dot in the center, but if you wanted to do a border, I would suggest that you come down this way and then do your other side. Put your little dot in the center. And that way I get my spacing a little bit better. Uh, you can also do more than one of these inside. And so I'm going to do my dot, my line. I'm going to make these a little bit chubby there. And do my circle. And then I'm going to put two more of the little dot and line on the inside. I'm going to aura, come back around and aura that, and then do that again. Bring it around and make my third. Okay. And you can put these together as flowers. You can leave them alone. Like I said, you can make a border. And then for Cubell, which is this one, you start with kind of a seed pod is what I tend to call it. And then we're going to put a curve, an S curve inside, okay? Kind of reminds me of yin yang to begin with. And then we do kind of an S curve across that. And then we're gonna put auras down this side. And I'm gonna flip it around. This is a big piece of paper, so I'm struggling. I'm having trouble with keeping my camera focused. Hopefully it's doing okay for you. Okay. And then we're gonna come back. And from this side, we're gonna make a little curve, like putting a little fescue in there. And then from the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. And sometimes I struggle with getting those <laughs> to be the same. But if you make them a little bit fatter, like we did here, you have more room. And then you can also, if you want, put striping in here with or without the little sparkle in the middle. And that really changes the look of it there. Takes a little longer if you wanna add the striping, but I think it's really cool. Okay, so there's the beginning and you can see down here I was practicing. I Kept doing something wrong. Imagine that. Okay. So <laughs> this is, is um, again, a Zendala. It was actually just uh, a larger piece of paper that I was practicing on. And I uh, used a Zendala to outline this and create a circle. This is a Four and a half inch circle, I believe. I always have to measure it in case you want to make it. It's mine's a little bit more than four and a half, but there you go. Okay, I'm going to start by doing Q bell in the center like this. And we don't have to be perfectly in the center, we're just going to make 
our little pod. Try to make it a little bit fatter than I did when I was first showing you. And then do our little curve. And then the, the little curve across here. And then we're going to put our auras. On each side. Kind of reminds me of a football shape. Maybe that's what I should be saying. All right. So now we're going to start down here in this corner. And we're going to come up and make a curve and put our little fescue shape. And then from this other corner, we're going to come around and do the same thing and put our little fescue shape. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it just enough to get another one started right next to it. Trying to make them about the same size. If it's not, it's okay. Do your little curve there in the center. Curve along here. Okay. Your auras on one side. And her auras on this other side. And then we're going to put our curves, our little fescues, curls here, and another one coming in this way. Okay, so let's do it again. Another little football shape. Okay, that was a little bit thin, but it's okay. And then where it curves this way is where we're putting our stripes. Okay, our little fescue shape. And Q-Bell is by Yuru Chin. And she is also a CZT. Okay, here we go, one more. And our little S shape in the center. Our little wavy line. Always turn in your tile to keep your hand comfortable. Here comes our other little fescue. And another one here. Okay. And these can also be done around the edge as a border. I'm going to go ahead and put another one here. You can just keep building it out. And I do find if I don't 
get that curve too big, then it's a little bit more even. So that's what I'm trying to do here. You get it too thin, like I did here, you don't have as much room for the little fescue. Uh, we'll just make it work. Okay, so since I didn't leave a whole lot of room, I'll just curve it. Same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna put another one coming off of here. A little wavy line down the center. A wavy line across the center again. Then we'll do our auras. Okay. Our little fescue curve. Another one coming this way. Sometimes these remind me of fish <laughs> in a weird way. Add our little curves. And we're going to put one more here. You can also vary the size on these. This one ended up being a little bit bigger. As you can see on this one, I got a little bit smaller. Put our center curve down the Long way, put our wave across this way, and then our auras. So, like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not. Uh, Gonna do any kind of music now. <laughs> that was a fail. I felt so bad. There was no way to undo it. All right. Um, let's have a, I wanna kind of reproduce what I did here. So that kind of gives us a center flower. And let's try. Just some couple of small ones coming off of here. I used to do a lot of little detail work with my Zentangle, not so much anymore. I enjoy it, but I just don't seem to be doing it as well as I did in the beginning. If I wasn't using my cell phone, I would uh, show you that I have a, a clear cover on the back of my phone and underneath that cover I have um, ribbons of Zentangle patterns that are really small and detailed. But I just, I don't enjoy doing that tiny stuff now. 
well, it doesn't help that with the pandemic, I haven't been able to get my classes updated. But I am happy to say that I got my second COVID shot last week. And I did not have a bad reaction from that. So that was very happy for me. Okay, let's do... Couple more little ones. And if it's hard for you to do detailed stuff, then keep them big. And make them various sizes. Make this your art. I think I say that every time, but that's important. You don't have to make yours look exactly like mine. I'm showing you how to do these patterns. And then you make the art your own. Mm. Okay, just for fun, let's put one more here. And like I said, you could go back and do striping on these. I'm not going to do that this time because it takes so much time. But it does add uh, cool drama. Okay. Turn the right way. All right. And we might come back and do a little bit more on that also. But now I'm going to start putting some of these discos in there. And let's just come out a little bit here. Do our first one. The dot, the line, petal. And then O, another dot and line, another dot and line, and then we're going to echo these, or R them, sorry, another O. And another O. Okay. And I want to put another one right next to this one. And I'm going to have it use the same aura. So I'm going to do it kind of in the opposite direction. I'm going to do the outside petal. Then I'm going to do the inside petal. And the other inside. And then put my little pet stems or little fescue. Sorry, I think I was covering that up. So let's do it again from this way. So let's try doing the little one first. Once you figure out how a pattern works, you can decide what works best for you. So for that one, I didn't have to lift my pen. Then I'm going to put my little 
stems in the center. Okay. And then I'm just going to bring a little stem up here to hold this as if it's a flower coming off of that. And I'm rounding it to make it look like a little flower. And I'm going to add some more little fescues to that. Okay, so let's do another one here. Again, I'm going to start I apologize that I'm still having trouble keeping this in focus today. Okay, I forgot to do my circle. We can do singles that way. Add a little fescue come off that way. All right. Okay, let's do another one here. Dot your line, pedal, and I'm going to do two R's on this one. And then I'm going to put another one coming out this way. So, like I said, I'm going to start this time. You can start with the outside one. Come around. Do your next one. Come back around. And then do your inner one. So, like I said, giving you some options for ways to draw this. Okay, so I'm looking at how I did this one. I'm going to see if I can recreate that. So I'm going to come off of this. And this time, I think what I did here was I made two circles. Okay, apologize for that. 
Uh, my phone had an alarm on it. So I'm going to do this one by starting here with a circle. And then I'm going to put a dot in the center. Let's get that one over so you can see. So I like how that looks. And then I'm going to make my little petals. One. Two. Three. With the little stems inside. Okay. And I'm going to turn it and do another one. So again, I'm going to start with the outside one. My middle one. And because I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, I tend to not necessarily get these even. Do my little stems inside. And then I'm going to turn it and do the next one. The bigger outer petal first. The middle one. And one more. And then put the little stems inside. Yeah, I like how that looks. <laughs> and then what I did was to come down with a little stem coming this way and then rounded it off. Yeah, I like how that looks. And then our little fescues coming off of that. So let's do that again over here. And I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. Keep my hand out of the way. So we're going to start with a circle. And then Darken dot in the middle. Okay, there we go. Got it to focus. We're going to make a fat one. Make a center one. And if you'll notice for these, I'm not taking my pen up. These are continuous line. Put your three little stems in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna turn it and do another one. There's my first, second, third, little stems. Okay, let's do one more. Sorry. One, two, three, and your little stems. 
And then I'm going to turn it and add stem going here. And then darken this. So there's another option for how you can do it. So there's several ways to put that. So let's have, go put another one here that looks like these. So we're going to start with our circle and the dot inside. There's one. Two, three, another one, one, two, three. Okay, turn it again. I like feeling, feel, huh, filling a tile with organic patterns. I like doing it randomly. All right, bring that one down. Add our little bit of weighting down here at the center, at the bottom of it. Put a couple of fescues. Did not add my little fescues here. All right. So I think here I'm going to add another Q bell coming out. And then add my little fescue inside. Fescue inside of this one. Trying to decide what to do with the rest of this. Let's just try. Some simple cue bells around the border. Oops, I didn't do that one right. Hopefully that won't show. <laughs> okay, so we go around, kind of a teardrop shape. Come up, put our little fescue inside. Teardrop, touch, little. You could very easily, if even if you 
already got watercolor on your tile, you could come back and add colors on these. I have not done this as a border before, so we'll see how this turns out. Okay. It may look okay. You could come back and let's try that. I'm going to make these filled in just for something different. Again, try the what if. You can leave a little dot in the center of these. You could come back with your jelly roll and add some uh, dots in the center. Okay. And with Centangle, ideally, you don't have a big plan for what you're doing. It's just enjoying your creative ideas. And that's what I'm trying to do with you guys here. I used to really stress about what I was going to teach next and exactly how to do my lesson and practice the tile again and again. and I really was not enjoying it as much as I used to. So I have decided to try to share with you guys more spontaneity, be more spontaneous in what I'm deciding to do. And I hope you enjoy it. You can learn from my mistakes if I don't do it right. Of course, ends and tangle are no mistakes. They like to say that there are oops opportunities. Just learn from what you're doing. Okay, trying to not make this take too long. So let me go a little bit faster on this. And I didn't put any kind of a borderline on this, so I'm just hoping that it's somewhat symmetrical the whole way around. If it's not, it's okay. Had a very fun afternoon with the lady who was my very first Centangle teacher. I'm I'm very glad that she's in the same town that I am, and we had fun just playing with Lindy's magicals yesterday, coloring some tiles. Mm -hmm. 
If this is your first time to watch me, I don't do fast forward. I don't speed up my videos. Instead, I allow you to decide when you want to do that. You can um, use the settings in YouTube to make this go slower or make it go faster. Whatever works for you. But I don't enjoy watching videos that have been sped up. So I made the decision to not do that online. Okay, you can tell I did this one pretty big and they've gotten smaller as I went along. So I'm going to try to make these a little bit bigger as I come back around. I am consistently inconsistent. Oops. Okay. Let's go back this way. Okay. I'm going to zoom out just a tiny bit so you can see my whole centaur. Whoop, a little bit too much. That's better. Okay, so now I'm just going to very randomly, I'm going to come in and fill in some of these negative spaces. And then I'm just going to add some little fescues. In these areas that need a little something. Just random. I really enjoy adding these as little fillers. It's something that I learned from Maria watching her. All right, let's do a little bit of shading. Okay, so for these, to 
just going to put some shading along the bottom of these petals. And then soften that to bring it up. Smooth it out. And you can, if you wanted to, like put graphite on the outside, the aura. You could come back and um, even darken the outside of one of these petals. So for instance, on this single one, we could just fill it in. Don't forget to try what if, what if I do this, how would it look? So let's see how this one looks. If we fill in one. I think my pen is getting low on ink. Okay, and let's do that on this one. And if you have a sketchbook, try these in your sketchbook first. See what you like, what you don't like, and then after you've had a little bit of practice, then try it on a title. And I think that's a little bit too much. I'm going to use my kneaded eraser. I'm going to take some of that off of there. Got a little bit too dark for me. Okay, that's better. All right, so just along the bottom of these, we're going to add a little bit of shading. And these, I think, would be pretty with a little bit of color if you're doing it on a white tile. And the lighting in my room tends to make this look a lot darker than it actually is on my tile. You can put a little bit of shading up here at the top. Okay, I think I got each of those. Now I'm going to go down to the center of these cue bells. Add a little bit of shading. So the ones that all meet right here. You can, I'm not going to go through and do this on each one, but you can add a little bit of shading, come up and down each of these sides. 
which tends to give it kind of a little highlight. Eh, we might be able to do that quickly. So. I like how that looks. Gives it a more rounded look. Kind of a highlight there in the center. It's not as easy to do on those tiny ones. Okay, I'm just using a very light touch to add a little bit of graphite along each of these where the lines meet. And for the little ones, you may not even need to uh, use your blending stump. Trying to see if my jelly roll works. Sometimes it does, sometimes not. For these little dots, there we go. Where I colored it in all the way. Oops, that one I didn't color at all. So oh, just a little dot of white in the center of each of these. See if I can find my there it is. Okay. My Jelly Roll 10 works a lot better for this. There we go. My eight just doesn't seem to uh flow very well. I'm trying to not put my finger on the wet jelly roll. So it seems like I inevitably do that. Okay. So two simple patterns that uh, I hope you enjoyed. You can do a lot with those. You can vary them up. You can, like I said, make flowers out of Cubell. You can make the flowers out of Disco. That's my favorite thing to do. 
as you have seen. And then adding little fescues because each one of these seem to have little fescues inside. Kind of ties it all together. Thanks for watching. Again, I apologize for the music on my last video. It was terrible. <laughs> and I'm not doing it again. So thanks for watching. I hope you're doing well. I hope that 2021 just keeps getting better and better for all of us. Please hit the like button if you liked it. If you have comments, I enjoy your comments, whether it's um, critical or not, because I want to know how to make my videos better. And I appreciate all of you. Appreciate you watching. And I will see you next time. Thanks and bye.